exploring the power of continuous diagnostic assessments. And uh, as teachers, we, we know that we assess for, for different reasons. We want to measure student understanding. We want to measure their growth in understanding, inform instruction, uh, help students uh, foster ownership of their learning and also be able to independently practice. Um, so related to these three particular needs that we have, uh, we have today joining us um, from Freeman Catholic College, Carla Giuliani Bruno. Um, Carla, are you there? Can you? Yes, I am. Yay, Hello, awesome. everyone. Hi, just busy marking, so I am here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank yeah. you for joining us, Carla. Um, Perhaps you do you want to say a little bit about yourself so people know a little bit more about you? Um, yes, I am um, the Assistant Leader of Learning here at Freeman. Um, and obviously the Leader of Learning and myself have, um, you know, tried to implement a way to assist students in reaching those minimum standard testings that occur um, at the end of Year 10 for the Rosa grade and also for their those students to be able to leave school, um, whether it be in year 10 or, and obviously do their HSC in year 11 and 12, to be able to go out in the world and obviously have that minimum standard and numeracy. Um, so, you know, hopefully um, after today, you'll get a bit of an insight. This is obviously teething for us at the moment because, you know, we were using math space and now we're using waypoints um, as well. So, um, yeah, so that's that's a little bit about where we are a big school. We are seven to 12 um, and we do use math space from seven to 12 for all our students. This was introduced about three years ago. Um, and now we've introduced waypoints this year and starting it as part of our numeracy improvement program. Awesome. Thank you, Carla. Uh, let me just see. So before we started, we were talking about how you implemented a numeracy hour at your school, which runs separately from the regular math sessions. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and why you implemented the numeracy hour? Yes. So um, as I mentioned before, um, we found that there were a few students, and we're not talking about five or six, probably about a class to two classes full of students that aren't meeting the numeracy minimum requirements um, for their RASA grade. So um, at the moment at the school and last year, probably about two or three years ago, we introduced a um, reading time for literacy in our homerooms or our pastoral classes as we call it. Um, and since then, the timing of our classes have been a little bit up and down with time changes occurring because of that. So the principal then stated that he wanted the obviously Monday to Friday time to remain constant so that less disruption to the students and the teachers. Um, our Tuesday day, obviously, there is no numeracy hour or literacy hour because it's our sport day, but basically Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we have um, this 20 minute time slot after our pastoral administration requirements are done, where the bell will sound and um, Monday, Wednesday and Thursday are their literacy time. So they will be reading during that time to encourage students to read, which they do little of these days with technology. Um, and then um, I put up my hand and said, well, why don't we have a numeracy time as well? So the Friday is dedicated to numeracy and that is a 20 minute time slot as well. Um, and obviously the principal said, well, you know, what are you going to do in those 20 minutes? Because at the moment with the reading time, it's just them either reading a book or a magazine or something of their leisure and what they enjoy to do. How are we going to get them to enjoy maths? Um, are we just going to give them out worksheets or, you know, they're already using math space in the classroom with teacher guidance. But sometimes, you know, that becomes just part of another lesson and we didn't want to um, introduce maths that way because then the students already that hate maths will hate it even more. So right. um, at the same time that this was sort of 
playing around at school, um, Nisa came in and was talking about this new system called Waypoints um, and there the penny just dropped and I thought, oh yes, we could imp try and implement that into this 20 minute time slot. And obviously we just started, I mean, the first three weeks of school, um, you know, planning and everything was um, a little bit up and down, but I think by week four, we were on. Um, students were um, introduced to how to log in um, into this system. Obviously we had to advise staff as well as a whole school community and parents as well. So, and that's yeah. challenges there. Yeah. That comes, that comes up for, for my next, next question, yeah. which uh, we know, you know, whenever we're implementing something different, challenges will come up. So it will be interesting to hear from you. What are some of the challenges that you faced and, and how you, uh, you worked around them? Yes, so obviously after um, speaking with the principal and the leader of learning, um, we needed to address the staff as a whole. So obviously that occurred through a staff briefing. Um, there was a PowerPoint that was shared to staff to show them what students are going Going to see when they log in for the first time. So what website to go to, obviously they're using their maths based credentials because they would have been assigned those in their maths classes by their maths teachers. Um, so the, the first challenge was really getting the staff, all staff, not just math staff, aware of what was going to happen every Friday morning after our pastoral admin was complete. So we presented all of that information to all staff at a staff briefing. We emailed them, obviously, the PowerPoint. We also emailed them a Google Doc at the end of that PowerPoint that um, allowed staff within those homerooms to be able to log in any students that couldn't get internet connectivity or basically weren't in maths class when the maths teacher said to them, here is the steps and the processes um, in play to for you to be able to access waypoints. So, right. you know, like, like I said, those little teething issues were occurring and we were um, addressing them as they occurred. Um, you know, students, once the staff and the students were made aware of how to get in and what to do, then the other challenge became, well, what do we do with those students that are just staring at a screen or trying to do something else other than waypoints? Right. Um, so, yeah, so the staff, the pastoral staff, which aren't normally obviously at the math staff, are patrolling the classroom in that 20 minutes and they're just sort of seeing whether they're actively on those on that site mm -hmm. um, and challenging those students okay this is your 20 minute numeracy time slot and you need to be doing your work mm -hmm. um, if there were internet issues so obviously the modems have to be um, compatible the school needs to um, see that through we obviously advised IT department about it in advance um, and there were some issues of students not being able to access the Skype site because of a security feature that we implement and have on all of our devices so those students were then directed to the IT department to sort out those issues with them directly so you know they weren't on the first week or the second week by the third week they were on um, um, you mentioned yeah. that the, the teachers overseeing the numeracy hour, they are pastoral teachers, so they're not maths trained, is that no. correct? No, that's right. I mean, there would be like myself, I've got my own pastoral class. So obviously I'm there as a mm -hmm. maths teacher and a pastoral teacher, but there are obviously all those other pastoral classes that don't have um, maths teachers in there. So those like those staff are just purely and simply to do their admin work in the, mo in the morning and go around and have a look are you on that site and are you working through that site for the next mm -hmm. 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. So all staff were made aware of that at the staff briefing. They were given that PowerPoint shared with them. At the end, there is a link for those uh, student logs of students not on it. Um, and that's basically all they're doing. It's not onerous on the staff to um, teach them maths. They're not there to teach the maths. That's um, the math staff's responsibility. But because we're all teachers of numeracy and literacy, right. we have to make sure that within that 20 minutes, those students are actively doing uh, waypoints productively and working through their checkpoints. Um, but obviously those mm -hmm. students at that time that 
weren't on for whatever reason, that staff would just log in their name to say, this is the reason why they're not on. And obviously they could then do their reading or whatever else they were doing um, in that 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that by term two, um, all students would have been already working on waypoints. I mean, we haven't had any issues past week four, five, um, but like I said, we did, don't have it this Friday, this coming Friday because of Good Friday. So we're looking at about four weeks of solid um, students just working on these checkpoints. Mm -hmm. I should mention as well for anyone watching that um, Waypoints is, is independently run by the students. So they don't have to, the teachers don't have to assign anything. They just log in and start doing the work. So that might have contributed to make it easier for the pastoral teachers to also oversee the, the whole numeracy hour, right? Yes, and that's correct because we, the, the principal wanted us to show him, you know, if we're going to introduce a numeracy period, because a literacy period is just pick up a book or anything that you like and read. But the issue was what would we introduce for the numeracy period? And this was a good way to do that because it can be easily monitored. Um, the math staff within that 20 minutes um, will then be able to monitor student progress within their classes. Um, and then the other staff who are just checking screens to make sure they're on task, I mean, that's not onerous at all, but they're, they're quite happy to sit at the back and have a look at student streams, lifting up their head every five minutes if they're doing their own work and just making sure that they're all on task. Yeah. So it's not onerous at all. That's right. That's I think, yeah, the hard part was for us as a department to set it all up and mm -hmm. get uh, staff aware of it and students aware of it. Once they're aware of it and they know what's in place, I think it's just that matter of um, repetition every Friday. It becomes a routine for them, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, now, it's interesting because the, the numeracy hour, it is run outside of the class time, like the normal yeah. math class time. Was there a particular reason why you guys decided to do it that way instead of taking part of the lesson mm -hmm. to do the waypoints? So originally with our reading program, um, when you seven start, they have a dedicated reading period. Um, but we found that it, that wasn't the case for year eight, nine and 10. So it's only for year seven. So um, the problem was after year seven, these students aren't reading. Everything's online nowadays. Um, books are audio. I mean, who, if you think about it, these students are aged between 11 and 18, I don't think oh, yeah. they're going to pick up a book. So um, that reading time was introduced. And the reason why numeracy time was introduced was because I felt it was a bit unfair that we would have four periods or four 20 minute time slots dedicated for reading and none for numeracy. Um, and yeah, and they dedicated obviously that 20 minute time slot outside of the period timetable um, straight after pastoral and they just shortened the periods by two minutes each. Um, okay. So it's working out well. Hopefully next year, if this all goes well this year, um, I will negotiate for two and two, two for literacy and two for numeracy. So have more time for uh, numeracy. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, yeah, fingers crossed for that. Um, now, the, the other question I had was, because Waypoints will give you that diagnostic approach and it will let you know the students, you know, where, where they have any gaps and, and track the progress. Yes. Um, but do you, how did you measure uh, the student understanding before that? How did you have a baseline to identify um, how students were, were working? So um, before, obviously, we were using math space and obviously their school based assessments um, and teachers would give topic tests, but these were all individualized. The topic tests were individualized. The um, assessments were through pathways or as a common for year seven and eight. We had a real huge variety of where students were at, in particular, the year sevens. I mean, all they sit is a pat maths testing to see where their level is. Um, but math space would give an identifier of, okay, have they completed a certain questions? What level are they capable at? Because the program then identifies their weaknesses and 
um, truncates the questions for them so that they're not onerous. But waypoints, I find, is faster. So they're able to complete 10 questions. Now, math space, you know, you, the working needs to be shown. It's more lesson directed, um, and that's what we want. But this way, 20 minutes in the morning, they can complete either one or two um, checkpoints. If they don't know the answer, they can skip it. Um, so basically, the students just go to that page that you see, and then they enter in their year level. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that um, as they progress through these 10 questions each um, Friday, um, their ability is shown as to how much they can get through. Mm -hmm. um, so maths staff will be checking that data to see how their students in their own classes are going. So we've obviously set up math space. So we've got our own classes. And then now when they join Waypoints, they're under that same class. So me as a maths teacher, I would go in and check the overview of how these students are performing, if they're on, if they're not, and how fast they're working through them. And basically I use that data to help me in the classroom to um, give support to those students with their gaps mm -hmm. and revise any part of um, their misunderstandings or misconceptions or gaps that they might have. Right. Um, so I don't know if you've got a screen of what that overview looks like. Yeah. Yes. So, so here, um, it, you know, for example, I can put that overview up based on strands, so number and algebra. Um, the ticks show that they have completed it. So at the bottom, there's the three, four, five, six, and seven. So let's say this was a student in year seven. They've accomplished all of the stage three parts of number and algebra. Stage four, there's only one circle at the top, so they're halfway through. They haven't quite completed it. Um, in year, stage five, so year five, so not shouldn't say stages, um, so year three, four, year five, um, levels within number and algebra within the stage um, three course, there are some gaps. So the grades, obviously, they haven't either, it could be either or they haven't accomplished it or they haven't been asked those questions yet. So I'm not really concerned about the grey ones yet until the students work through as many waypoints or checkpoints as they can. That's yeah. right, yes. So in terms of looking at the data that you've seen, you are already being able to you know, teachers at your school are already able to go through the data and then use that to inform instruction moving forward. Yes. And, you know, we can be teaching number and algebra. We can go into waypoints and say, oh, look at that. Um, you know, my year seven class is nowhere near the, the number and algebra section that they are or they are. Or there's a student, like for example, this student might be very lacking. I mean, he's got or she has gaps from year six. And so we can go... Right back to year six, which is their stage three content and say, okay, what is it that they should have learnt in numbers and algebra? Oh, look, they, they would have learnt a little bit more concrete, um, you know, apples and oranges representing letters or something like that. We can introduce that in the classroom. So it's all about um, the students though, ac having access to waypoints and being then able to complete. And as you've shown here in the slide, students can progress through as many um, checkpoints as they like. They're in 10 question slots. Um, they can skip through the questions they're not sure of as long as they complete that checkpoint because otherwise they have to start again. So mm -hmm. I, we've informed all the students that if you start a checkpoint, skip through the ones you don't know, and in that 20 minutes, complete at least one. Those mm -hmm. able-bodied students will complete two foot with no problems. Yeah, um, yeah. Some students, they, they do go faster and... Yeah, because for them, it's the it stage three or four. Yeah, as they, many check point, checkings they can <laughs> during right, that time. Right. I mean, if um, they're in year nine, pathway three, they're fine with, you know, going through those quite rapidly because they're already beyond stage four and stage five content. Um, so basically, we hope that they... That's with, right, yes. Yeah, with, within a um, term, we're hoping that they complete 100 questions, so 10 checkpoints, um, and that mm -hmm. would be one each week in the term. 
but right. this, but this and then term, in term we didn't yeah this term we didn't get to that stage because it was introducing it the first two or three weeks were um, interrupted with whatever they were interrupted with um, and then we missed this Friday as well so um, yeah that's you know you've got their suggestions for improvement um, the the I think for, for moving forward, what I'd like to see is at the end of next term where we're at because then we would have mm -hmm. completed mm -hmm. the whole term with students starting from week one all the way through to week 10 and see how these students are progressing through these ticks. So in our maths meetings, our maths KLA meetings, we'll be able to open up our viewpoints and discuss as staff, look here, you know, a person A is struggling a lot. We need to maybe get them more support in the classroom or life skill them. Um, and, you know, it's all about collaboration and working together. So it's not just a, a me thing, it's a maths department thing because all the staff need to have yeah. implemented this with their students. And then it's a whole community, a whole school community thing as well, where the um, staff are on board with these students learning and improving with their numeracy skills and monitoring that mm -hmm. in that 20 minute time slot. Yeah, yeah. right. That's that's really, really good. And, um, you know, thinking about what you'll be able to achieve in term two, you know, once the students have completed the diagnostic phase and they can start to do the growth check-ins, the check-ins yeah. will be even faster with only five questions. Right. Um, I was going to ask you, you know, just thinking about uh, everything that you've said, uh, you had this opportunity to do something for numeracy at, at your school. Yes. And while, you know, I went there and I showed you waypoints and what it looked yeah. like, but what about waypoints made you think that that was the best tool for you to use during this time? Yeah, well, because we were using Math Space and, and it is probably one of the better programs out there because it allows students to scaffold and use hints and videos and guidance through their questioning, not just a multiple choice, yes, no, and just one um, correct answer solution. You know, it's, it's building the ability for understanding and not just rote learning. And this is what we're finding in students, even in the higher levels of maths that I teach. Um, these students are rote learning their way through mathematics. And when they leave school, they have no basic skills and they have no idea what they've learnt. Um, so with with being that uh, program with Math Space, we thought, well, we want something in 20 minutes that is easy for staff to use, easy for students to use, and easy to monitor. And when you introduced waypoints, I thought, well, if Math Space is good, well, I'm supposing that waypoints would be good. And so far, so good. <laughs> it's, it's oh, that's good. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have asked. Yeah, I have asked some students. I said to them, you know, like, what do you, um, how do you feel on a Friday when you're on the computer going through a checkpoint, you know, those 10 questions or 20 questions if you have time, um, compared that to the um, reading days that you have. And they said they all, well, the ones I spoke to, it's not a whole um, survey, but the ones that I spoke to said they prefer the waypoints, they prefer numeracy because they're able to read questions, go through them, tick, 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 done. Whereas the reading, it's so hard for them to get motivated into reading. And it takes them longer, that processing skill of, you know, it takes them probably out of the 20 minutes, the first 10 minutes to start reading, and then it's time to leave. So right. um, I think so far they're hopefully enjoying it, but we'll have to do a whole school survey on that. Yeah, that would be really nice to see. Um perhaps we can have some tick tock again with you to see yeah. that um, yeah. um how it's yeah. working um i think let me just check um now do you, the other thing i wanted to talk about is that we know that um students will have to do naplan and um how does that fit in with your numeracy hour do you have you guys planned around that or was it something that was completely separate yeah, no, so obviously the NAP plan is embedded within our teaching and teaching programs for year seven um, to nine, um, but we also do it in year eight because, you know, we don't want to give them a, a gap between year seven and nine and not teach anything in year eight. Um, the, 
the thing that we try to do is expose these students to NAP plan style questions. But I think with waypoints, um, we're keeping that separate and hopefully the style of the questions that they're seeing on waypoints and NAP plan within the classroom um, will marry like they'll, they'll see the connection between mm -hmm. them. Um, I did mention to you, Nusa, maybe that's something that could be embedded in part of the questioning styles, um, that they see those NAP plan style past papers. I mean, questions, sorry. Right, right. Embedded, that maybe that could be a suggestion as well. Because if they're seeing those types of questions where they're having to think outside the box, um, those higher order thinking style questions, then that probably would be even more benefit because we're not only just doing it in the classroom, but they're doing it as part of their, their numeracy hour. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's thank you for the suggestion. Mm -hmm. I'll bring it up with the team. Mm -hmm. um, oh, in terms of um, after the, the students complete the diagnostic phase and they enter the growth phase, uh, what are the plans for waypoints with um, with the numeracy hour? Do you guys um, see it continuing with the numeracy hour to check their progress? Um, what is, you know, just wanted to know what is the plan perhaps for term two yep. towards the end of term two? Yep, so we, um, we have uh, KLA meetings obviously um, every so often probably about three or four a term. So within those, we're going to analyze our data as a staff and then um, see where the gaps are. Um, and obviously those teachers um, have to implement those improvement plans within the classroom or individualize them for each student, depending on how low their um, minimum standards are. But um, in relation to, um, like how we're going to move for the students as they progress. So once they achieve that growth phase, the Waypoints program itself gives them suggestions to, okay, I suggest you practice number and algebra or measurement. And so it'll lead them at the bottom of the page into those um, sections. So even, even though the teacher's not saying, okay, now I want you to, do this within math space. So we could assign them, let's say, um, a quiz and personalise that to a particular student or a particular class based on their um, limitations or their misconceptions or gaps. But Waypoints itself tells the student when they log in as to where they need to um, go to next. So they that can would, take some yeah. ownership of their learning out of the way. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Take some ownership. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Carla. I think we have, oh yeah, this is the image that shows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where students can click through and practice independently. That's right. Um, I was going to um, ask you about how math space fits in with this. Um, I think you mentioned it a little bit already yeah. about how you, you, you know, you create those tasks and, and yeah. uh, but if you want to explore, uh, expand a little bit on that, uh, feel yeah. free to do so. so. Yeah, so that's what I was mentioning before is, you know, we want to, the aim of introducing this program is not just to have another online resource to add to the cost and add to the um, pressure for either the staff or the students. But what we wanted to do was find a way to close that learning gap um, between classes, between um, year levels, between pathways and between in individual students. So basically it's a form of revision. It's a form of practice that can be accessed quickly and done quickly. Um, so it's not onerous on anybody. Um, there are template tasks, group tasks, lessons to view with videos and online quizzes. That's everything I mentioned from Math Space. So teachers assign these to the students within their classes or the whole class in general. And, you know, I've, I've assigned some for holiday lessons, um, for weekend work, you know, if, if you know, it doesn't have to be onerous. It's not part of their homework, but it's extracurricular that they can do to improve on their math skills. Now, those students that hate maths um, are in the bottle, you know, the lower levels of their maths ability. Um, I think Waypoints gives them that um, freedom if they don't know something to skip. 
And then as that they're doing that, the program is then identifying those gaps. So then we can then implement that gap in their learning earlier on. So for example, I've got a student at the moment who's in year 10, who is struggling with year five content. Now, how can I teach that student um, equations at a year 10 level if they don't have basic algebra skills at a year five level? So that's where Waypoints is helping me a lot faster than math space. Math space, I can see if they're doing the work or not. I can see where they've got that I've got to go individually to those students. Whereas Waypoints, I can see it up as an overview for the whole class. Yeah, that's that's the whole idea behind Waypoints. We wanted to simplify and make the data be visually available for teachers. And then math space can be the learning platform and then reaching those students. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So I think we have um, some time for questions um, from um, from the pet, from the people here on the call. Thank you so much for all the questions. By the way, um, Aaron, do you have? Yes, do it. Yes, I do. Okay. There are a couple of uh, more waypoint specific questions, but feel free if you have any questions for Carla about the implementation of the numeracy hour or anything like that uh, to pop them in the chat too. Uh, the one that came out was around where to start. So whether you start with a math space task or whether you start with a waypoints check in. Um, and I guess uh, Carla, did you want to jump in? Obviously, you were already using math space. First, yeah. the students were using tasks. Um, I, I would probably start, like if, if they're looking at getting math space or waypoints, I'd probably go with waypoints um, as a quick diagnostic tool to see where students are and their gaps in their learning. And then obviously if they can um, implement math space as their learning platform, well, that, that'll be good as well because they go together. But um, Waypoints, I think, is just a lot faster um, at, and easier for the students to work through, whereas math space, they have to write down um, all of their working, show all of their working with their questions, um, unless you're doing multiple choice, yeah. Is there another question? Uh, Yes, I'm not sure if this would be for you, Carl, but we'll see. Um, it was for using waypoints in math space. Will you need? Uh, will it need to set different tasks according to student ability? So, do you set tasks, or do you rely on the adaptive tasks? Um, yeah. Look, I'm I'm a <laughs> I'm a person that's quite. Um, I like to do things fast, so I always do adaptive tasks. I find the quick for me to set up but also it adapts to the student's level. If I do a customised task, then I'm setting them, I'm not, I'm not differentiating them. Um, so I would probably do a, an adjusted task. There are loads of templates. So teachers within Freeman, um, like I said, we've been using it for two, three years now. Um, if I create a task, I can save it and other staff can then see that task and they can reuse it. But there's also templates that Math Space sets up. So I can use those as well. So it's literally, it takes me about a minute to set up a task. That's it. And then I, I copy the link and put it on to my Google Classroom and the kids have it. Is that the question? Yeah, that was it. I'll just add in two. Um, I think I was going to add on to that question saying that if you are using Waypoints, there is nothing for teachers to assign. The students go in and it, everything is automatic. Yeah. But then, you know, as, as a, um, a next tip for, for getting the students to practice their gaps, while they can do that independently, the teachers also have the power to choose exactly what they want to practice and, yeah. and what they want the students to work on uh, using the math-based tasks then. Okay. Erin, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Um, there's one more question about the collecting data. So uh, Peter's asking if, um, is, for it said, for example, in Ms. A's group, 
can they do the following skills rather than looking at individual students and seeing data for one student at a time? So can you see, I guess, a class level view of that? Yes, that, that's the overview page. So I can see the whole class overview and then I can click on um, a, a particular um, strand or a particular question or a particular student from there. But the overview page is what saves my life because I can just see the whole class as a whole. It, it makes it easy to see trends in particular areas that most students might be struggling with. So you can kind of group them together and say, okay, we're going to teach uh, a revision on fractions, for example. Mm. Um, and then if you have a one-off student that has also need, need for long division revision or something like that, then you can differentiate for the student level. Uh, but yeah, the idea is that with the data, you can see and, and see the trends more easily to differentiate at a class level, not so much as just a student level. And when, when I do my analysis, um, like I said, I'll do it on now on a Friday within that 20 minute time slot. So while the kids are doing that, that's my time to prep for analysis. Um, if I do see those gaps, I, there's just one thing I have to click and that is, okay, the system, the program's recommended this person, this student to do this and I just press it and it's done. They, they've sent the student that recommendation. Um, it's good. I don't have to do anything. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think um, we might have Rachel, more questions. The others come on. Rachel asked one that's probably more for us, Nusa, about um, reporting on New South Wales outcomes. The answer is yes, they're yeah. coming in term two. Yeah. Um, they're being worked on at the moment, so they shouldn't be too far away, and student data where it's relevant will be transferred yeah. as well. That's good. And even on math space, you've got the Australian curriculum and the New South Wales. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, just jumping around, following questions here. Um, how many check-ins do students need to do initially so that you can see those gaps? Yeah. So like I said, in the term, this term, we probably only did four, five Fridays. Um, the data starting to show up now. So I, I think they would have to do like, they, like I said, some of them may only get through one checkpoint in that first Friday that we started. Others didn't get through any because they didn't realize to skip the questions and end it. Um, and so therefore it didn't save any data because they hadn't completed it. Others went to through two or three checkpoints. So it depends on the capability of each student, but I would say, I think you would start to see the data come through after a term of using it. If you were only using it for 20 minutes, if you're doing using it for more, we're only 20 minutes on a Friday. If you were using it every day for 20 minutes, well, then you'd get there faster. And, and the data is also updating um, live. So every time there is a new checking that the students complete, that data is going to reflect you know, the latest information uh, from the student as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have any other questions for Carla? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Um, I was going to mention that um, I know that you guys are probably interested in seeing how it looks like, you know, me demoing it. Um, we have, um, we're going to, to show you how it works and uh, give you an idea of how you might use it. Um, if you have any other questions for Carla, please, please let us know. Otherwise, we'll thank Carla for, for her presence, for no her wisdom and um, yeah, for Don't being you. part of <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't create the program so you've saved my life at the end yeah. oh thank you yeah we really um, appreciate it color as well just it's lovely to see the real life application of what yeah. we're doing rather than just talking about it it's nice to see it in action and yeah. interesting ways of being implemented too particularly with a whole school buy-in like you have at the moment it's really yes. good Yes. Oh, and, and um, yeah, and I just wanted to also mention we're, on, we're using math space from 7 to 12, but we're only implement, we've only implemented the numeracy from 7 to 10. 
because obviously once they're in year 11 and 12, they would have met those minimum standards. Um, and 11 and 12 just do study and revision during those 20 minutes. So just making it clear it's only waypoints of seven to 10, but I'm sure you could use it for year 11 and 12 um, maths courses as well. Awesome, okay. Thank you so much, Carla. Thank you, okay. thanks everyone. Bye. See you, bye, enjoy the rest, bye. Thank you. Bye. So for everyone else on the call, um, if you want to stick around, I'm happy to show you everything about waypoints. I can answer any other questions you might have. And um, we also have a special offer to schools that don't have waypoints yet that want to have it, um, which I will announce it at the end of the call. Um, do you want to add anything, Erin? Uh, no, I just thought I'd jump in for you. There was just another question from Peter. Oh, sorry, I've got a funny um, shadow on that. Um, he was asking about students being given year 11 advanced content when they're at working at a lower level, asking if that's normal. So I thought it might start with just a little bit of an explanation of the system and why sometimes those questions come up. Right, yes. So with waypoints, I might jump ahead with my slides here. Um, with waypoints, though the students will when they when they first come in they will pick a level that they are working on say year 10 if they are a year 10 student um, but because math space is um, you know we, we're creating a, a, a map of understanding for all the outcomes uh, available for for maths from seven to to ten um, and when students are, at, are being asked questions from a, a, a higher level, we are basically testing to see if they're ready to, to go, you know, to see something more advanced rather than just keeping them on the easier questions. So the same way that students forget skills and we might go back and ask something easier to check if they are still proficient on that skill. We do the same for, um, you know, how, um, more difficult skills. So if, um, if they have been answering questions about year 10 and that seems to be going well, waypoints will every now and then come through and say, hey, do you know how to answer this question, which is more challenging? just to check if they are ready for the next level. So that's why sometimes um, questions will get harder or sometimes they will get easier, which is a, a way that the system has to keep track uh, of everything that they have learned to make sure that they're not forgetting any skills and also to check if they're ready for the next level. Um, now, what you are seeing here on this graph is, is basically how waypoints work in the background. So when students answer uh, a question, uh, let's say uh, one step equations, a, a question about one step equations that opens up the possibility, possibilities to ask questions about two step equations and, and something more advanced. And, and that's um, how the, the coloring is working there as well. So you will be able to see that certain nodes will open up to more uh, skills and so we're able to then measure more skills with that you know similar uh, with that same question um, now if we we look at how it works in terms of using the product um, just go through some of these slides to to help you understand when students um, log in they will be prompted to answer questions for the check-ins they do those check-ins and the teachers will then see the data. There is no assigning uh, diagnostic tests. There is no uh, pre-work from teachers in, in getting you know, those questions uh, out to the students. The students just have to log in and start doing the questions. Um, and as they do those check-ins, the, the graph here will start to populate the colors in and then you will able, be able to see um, how many skills the students have ticked off, where the gaps are, where they might be extended. Um, the questions on waypoints, if you already use MathSpace, you might know that uh, in MathSpace, students will have the opportunity to enter every single step of the way. They will have the hints and videos to help them through each step. Uh, now on waypoints, because the purpose of the platform is to diagnose the student's understanding, uh, they will mostly see questions that are multiple choice or single input kind of questions. And these questions, they have been designed for waypoints 
Um, so it, it's not just, you know, a question that we used to have on that space. It's a, a completely new set of questions to um, designed for purpose uh, to make sure that we are um, measuring students' understanding for those skills. And as um, the students complete the diagnostic check-ins, which are 10 questions every time, uh, then they will enter what we call the growth phase, which is um, only five questions every time. And it will measure student understanding uh, from that baseline and make sure that we are checking if they still have the skills and making sure that we are also trying to see, are they ready for the next level? Uh, and that creates a graph for, for you as a teacher to see um, how they're growing or how can I see the teacher dashboard look like after my students have completed the diagnostic waypoints? Um, it's taking some time there to, to get to that point. Uh, let me actually show you what it looks like when I go to waypoints. I'll just log in as a, as a teacher here. Well, you can see that. Just while news is logging in, we can add there, um, based on the feedback we've had, we're also shortening this too. So uh, the product team are currently working on making it. So once this have just completed one check-in, you'll start to see the data in more detail than previously as well. Yeah, so we're trying to make it faster for both the students, for them to see the the skills report because they are finding it quite useful and, and they like seeing what they have already ticked off. Um, but also for teachers to know, okay, I can already start seeing some data come through. Um, the difference from, from this, this report here, uh, from students that are in the diagnostic phase versus the ones that have completed it, is this little heart rate monitor here. So this purple circle represents students that are still completing the diagnostic phase uh, and then anyone that doesn't have it, those students have already completed the 100 questions and they have probably started the, the growth check-ins. You can also go to the activity to see exactly how many, um, how many diagnostic check-ins the student still needs to complete and how many growth check-ins they have already completed after the diagnostic phase um, has been completed as well. It also notifies you of students that, you know, perhaps have not been doing the check-in. So you can remind them of that um, with the idea that if they keep doing this every week, then you have up-to-date data on their understanding. So I might make this a bit bigger. Sorry about that, guys. There you go. So just, you know, as a teacher logging in, this is uh, some of the data that, that Carla was talking about. Uh, where she can see for her whole class uh, where um, students have gaps from previous years. For example, Joseph and George, they both have gaps from years four, five, and six. And if this is a year six class, uh, I can see that not all students have everything uh, ticked off for year six, which is quite normal if they have just started it. Um, but for year five, some students also have gaps from this previous year's year levels there. Um, if you are curious about what these colors represent, they have, um, oh, we have a color reference here. So basically, if they don't have a, a green tick, they, they have either demonstrated half of the outcomes for that grade level or just some of them. Uh, the gray one is for when students have not demonstrated a proficiency for that outcome yet and question mark they haven't been uh, they have not been tested on it um, now if you click on a particular year level you can then expand that graph into something in more detail for for each of the strands there so if we look at number in algebra i can then clearly see that um, for this particular outcome here on, what is this one? This is about written or solving problems, um, written strategies for solving problems, digital technologies. So there is clearly a trend here for, for most of my students in this class 
because only two of them have been able to take off this skill. So this is what we were talking about being able to see, okay, what is a trend in this class and how can I address it? Um, whereas for something else, for example, this particular skill here, uh, comparing uh, and ordering fractions, most of my students have been able to take that off. There's only one student that I don't know if they, they have ticked off yet because they have not been tested on it. Uh, that's why I see the question. Let me see, I think we have some. I think it's, um, Aaron is answering the chat there, so that's okay. Um, the other thing that I was going to mention is that when students complete the diagnostic phase and uh, then they enter the growth phase, start doing check-ins for, for growth. Um, you, what you will see is then um, a measurement of their growth over time. So what we're looking at here is the last 90 days. Let's see if we look at just number and algebra. For number and algebra, I can see that Patricia has increased her understanding 75% of a grade level for number and algebra in the last 90 days. That's a lot of growth for her. Now you also notice that there is some negative growth for Kelly and George. Uh, and that happens when students forget things or when they make mistakes on questions that uh, measure the same skills that they previously have um, shown understanding for. So we're always checking because we know you know, students forget things and learning is it's not static. So we always go back and forth uh, to make sure that we have a true measurement of their understanding there. Um, and on the graph here, you can see anyone that's above the, the zero horizontal line, they are growing and anyone below it, that, that means they need some help there. If we go back to the overview page. Uh, I should mention that when you have students completing the diagnostic phase, you also get a grade level. Uh, so for Patricia here, she has uh, been able to complete and tick off all skills for uh, most skills for, for three all the way to year seven with some skills in year eight. That's why you see a 7.4 as her grade level there. Um, now, for students that are still on the diagnostic phase, that grade level may change because they may be able to show understanding for more skills as they complete more diagnostics. Okay, so from the, the student's perspective, if I open up a student account here on Waypoints, you'll be able to then see um, how students can practice independently based on their skills report. So when students log in, they have completed the diagnostic phase, they get to see their skills report and they can independently click to practice. Um, this particular student has some gaps in year three. So let's go through number and algebra. If I see, if I look at everything for year three, I can definitely see some gaps there. And I might start with the yellow one now this math space icon lets the student click and go straight onto the textbook. But then watch a video to even do an adaptive task uh, only you know, with the skills already selected. So only the topics that are relevant for that skill will be uh, listed on this uh, search here. So I can start an adaptive task, I can go to the lesson and watch a video or, or see if I'm ready with an example here. So there's you know, a video there. Depending on the, on the lesson, there might be a GeoGebra applet as well that they can play with. And uh, always a remember section for the challenging uh, things that students usually forget. So this is a, you know, an example from year three, uh, which is what my student had a gap one. Um, but it was, you know, straight from the program, they were able to come in and practice here. Um, another difference as well, when students do check-ins once they have completed the diagnostic phase, is that you can let the students know to check in on something that 
um, you're focusing on for the week. So if what you're working on is, is you know, something from a number in algebra, then you let them know to do the checking there. Uh, and then all the questions uh, for, for that student will be uh, under number in algebra there. I should mention that we are working to get uh, students uh, to be able to check in on a topic level. So that's coming up uh, as well as the New South Wales mapping uh, for, for all the outcomes there. Now, anything that a student does on um, waypoints, uh, it will be carried over so you don't lose any of the data when, once we have the mapping for New South Wales. All right. Um, might, um, I know that we have, we are almost one hour now into the call. So I should mention that um, for anyone that has joined us today, we are offering um, free access to waypoints for two classes of your choice. And that ac access is free until the end of this year. So it will give you an opportunity to experience the platform with a lot of time to, to explore it uh, and use it with your students. Um, all you have to do is just let us know which of those two classes you're going to use it with. Um, I will be following up via email to make sure that you guys have uh, the next steps there. Um, I see a question from Helen about having mapping for the Victorian uh, curriculum. I think that is being rolled out today, isn't it, Erin? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, yes, I think... I believe that's right. If everything's still on track, it should be coming out today. And again, that data will be transferred over all the student data. So yeah, you will be able to see it. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and then New South Wales is coming up next. Um, okay, so do we have any other questions? Anything else that you guys might want me to show or explain? I'm happy to stay on and, and answer any further questions. 